We've been revisiting, going back, trying to gather up the fragments so that we can move forward. search these things out and don't allow them to just be categorized as some quotes and some teachings. I'm very adamant about deconstructing our religious practices because we haven't been able to produce God's expectation. God had a plan from the foundation of the world and most of the church including ourselves because we are comprised of the collective body we have brought forth wind. Remember the scripture I gave you in Isaiah 29 and 18? Sure. It talks about being with the child, mm -hmm. but it has brought forth wind. Then I connected the wind with the doctrine that's in the church. And we brought forth, with, and I, you know, I was going to tempt it a long time ago to title the message, We Pass Gas. Because <laughs> that's what it means. In Hebrew, that's all it's saying. It's said, you know, wind, you know, anyhow. And uh, I just want to get us to the point where we understand that we want to be free from those things. And that we're not going to be passive as it relates to it. All of the things that have come through religion, you know, we have to allow it to go. And that's why reform is in here. For us to take a second look at everything. We have to take a second look at every facet of our life. And we have to filter it, not just through doctrine. Doctrine give us the formality on how to discern certain things. But we got to filter it to, to the heart of, heart of God. Amen. What's his intention for us right now? Y'all understand it? Yes, sir. It's imperative. <clears throat> we just can't continue to do what we've always done. That's why I'm, I'm excited to get done today so I can go to the migra uh, migratory or migration, how to be migratory, how to move, how to, how to not be settled. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We're not settlers. Right. We ain't supposed to camp out. We're supposed to be pioneers, progressing, moving. Everything that's associated with God moves. Everything that God touches comes alive. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. And life should reign in us. But it can't if we still allow religion to confiscate our future and confiscate our identity and confiscate our hope. We have a living hope. Am I the only one in the building? We do. We have a living hope. Yeah, I'm going to do this by myself. I don't care. But, uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's Zayo, man. Not, we know not that bios, but a lively hope. But there are religious tendencies that won't allow us to possess that hope. And so we continue to stagger at the promises of God. And then we're frustrated because we're hearing certain facets and tenets and, and, and principles and concepts. And yet we are not able to ascertain them or include them into our life. Amen. So these principles don't, doesn't have a doesn't, has not found a place in us that can produce uh, 
uh, the expectations of God, the, the wisdom of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God from the foundation. And uh, it's imperative. And this is where we talked about how we don't, you know, religion itself and some of the things we've been exposed to uh, generationally, needs to, they don't need to be restructured. They need to be abandoned. Yes. Yes. And I gave you guys a great example, you know, like an abandoned house on last time we were together. we got to make sure it's abandoned. Yes, Amen. Let a sticker be on it. In the spirit, tell yourself, I can't go in. It's risky. Amen. I can't go back to the weak and beggarly elements. You got to tell yourself sometimes. And uh, uh, we got to make sure we get there. Tell you that we're going to get there. Because if we don't, you're going gonna, gonna, gonna to be left spiritually deficient and mentally exhausted and physically depleted and financially destitute. And socially dysfunctional. Oh, boy. That's a that's a that's a boat low right there, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. Deficient in spiritually and exhausted mentally and emotional wreck and your body is depleted, your finances destitute and empty, and then you're socially disconnected and dysfunctional and you know you go from church to church and you can't really submit to nobody. Those are ramifications of a religious spirit. Or a religious mind. It's imperative for us to shake ourselves out of the dust of the earth. Amen. It's imperative for us to come out of the dung hill so that we can stand up again. You just can't sure. attest to that we're a uh, new, crea new creation or Christian because <clears throat> we know we celebrate the resurrection, but we, we're not. <laughs> the resurrection wasn't an event, it was a man. Come on. <laughs> Amen. It was this man. Remember the story in John 11? If he had a dinner, he wouldn't have died. Well, I'm the resurrection of life. And those that believe in me, though they died, they should live. And he wasn't talking, it wasn't the physical. I know he, he gave us a physical picture, but he was talking about a spiritual reality. There's a place in God, if the word, if we get the right word, if we can analyze the right principle, if we if we can excavate the very provision that's in the scriptures, you don't have to worry about dying. And I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about you won't be de spiritually deficient, mentally exhausted. You won't be physically depleted or destitute in your finances, and you won't be dysfunctional in your relationship socially. You can live. That was his intention. He came to bring us life and that more abundantly in this dimension, not the next dimension. We, we can have it now. Amen? Amen? And we said the enemy's strategy is to make us ignorant, to keep us in the ignorance, to keep our hearts blinded, to keep the light out of our heart, to make sure we don't have an aha moment mm -hmm. so that we won't become sensitive to the word and the spirit of God so that we can come out of darkness. He wants to make sure the lights stay off. Lights is on for us. We're in the apocalypse, in the very essence of apocalypse. Everybody else looking for an external apocalypse. There's an internal apocalypse where the veil is being done away with. Amen. 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 Yeah, he's, he's, he's commanding that light to shine in darkness. The God of this world is trying to blind us, but he's commanding the light to shine in our darkness. And that's why we need strong teaching, apostolic teaching, prophetic teaching. So every time we get up and we declare a truth, a beacon of light, and when light comes, it brings hope. Amen. We should not be discontented, downcast. Our continent should not be fallen. Psalms 4 says he's the lifter of our head. Yeah. He ain't just talking about lifting his head. That's on your neck. <laughs> he's the lifter of my thinking. Yeah. And we want to get us to that point, y'all. Amen. And you should want to be there. Amen. 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 And then we said one of the things that uh, religion or uh, yeah likes to do is keep everything external. And and <clears throat> you know. Let me give you an exact quote. The key to this life is everything you would ever need has its origin within you now. And the trick of religion is to keep everything external. 
That's why it's fasting, praying. The, we measure the productivity of God through effort. If I'm not busy, God must be absent. All right. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Sure. Most churches are active. Yes. The doors are always open. I, I'm, not, I'm not against that. But you can build a tower of Babel and not know it. That's true. Yep. Yep. You can have a wood and hay and a stubble and not know it. Mm -hmm. We've got to get to the point where we're not living externally. It's got to be within us. That's why he said the kingdom don't come with observation. Where is the kingdom? It's in us. Among us. In us. The kingdom. The spirit of God work. In us. We got the earnest of, of the kingdom of God. We got the earnest of heaven. The down payment in us. And even Proverbs says, we have to keep our heart with all diligence because what happens? Out of what? The issues of life. Life. And it's not talking about troubles. It's not talking about predicaments. It's the boundaries of life. Look it up in Hebrew. It means the boundaries. So if you want to increase your boundaries, you don't... See, most of us want to increase our boundaries through knowledge. That's why if we get, if we get in a large heart, then our boundaries increase. And heart is significant because the heart, if you understand it, he said their heart was wax gross because they didn't have understanding. So my heart is enlarged or my issues of boundaries enlarged through my understanding. So when I increase my understanding, I increase my value. Yeah. 